Y'all, I am trying out a new setting. You know, as you notice, it's a different background in the back. <laughs> I know, right? So, a quick story time. Y'all, let me tell y'all. So, I was literally just chilling one day. I had to quarantine at the crib for about a week before a procedure, before my colonoscopy and endoscopy. And I was literally in the house for a whole week. So after my procedure on that Friday, after everything just kind of healed up and everything, I said, guess what? We are about to go find a bookcase. We are about to make sure that we are adding something different to this home. I'm really big about trying to make this house into a home because I've been living in this house for about a little over a year now. And I have a whole bunch of boxes. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt, right? So I have all these little boxes of different trinkets. I, I found a box the other day with the other half of my elephants, which is crazy to me, right? But needless to say, needless to say, I went to one of my favorite thrift stores of all time and I found this wonderful, 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 amazing bookcase. And I mean, I'm probably gassing the bookcase up right now. I can't stop talking about the bookcase. But the mere fact that I found this bookcase for $15 when I found it on, I think, was it Walmart for like about $89. And I'm just like, yes, ma'am, let's go. Let's be savvy, okay? I'm trying to be a good steward of my money. You know, financial wellness is very, very key. Finances can be a huge stressor for some of us, including me. <laughs> so I'm really trying to make sure that I'm spending less and saving more and investing more. So um, for anybody who is looking to make sure that they are doing better with their finances, hit the like button and we will do another video on how to increase financial wellness okay okay boom or you can also head over to legacyspks.com and you can check out the replays from the mental wellness for the culture conference i will drop that in the description box below but let's get to it speaking of funding today we're going to talk about the different ways that we can fund our mental health goals right and so oftentimes when i come across a lot of my friends my loved ones and even my clients especially when they're transitioning out of the program they'll say miss sierra i want therapies uh but y'all expensive uh can you help a brother out and i'm like <laughs> I'm a therapist with a therapist and trust me I get it I know how expensive it can be but here are a number of things that you can think about when it comes to funding your mental wellness journey number one your insurance so whether you have commercial insurance like Blue Cross Blue Shield or AvMed or if you have traditional Medicaid Medicare whatever make sure that you are looking at the directory to see which clinicians are within network that'll save you a ton of money in comparison to paying out of network fees staying within network can be limiting at times but also check to see what your out-of-pocket expenses look like as well also consider your HSAs and your FSAs so HSAs are your health spending accounts and FSAs are your flexible spending account. And that's just you taking money, putting it away. And usually these things are very autonomic in nature. Auto, yeah, autonomic or automatic? Automatic, automatic. All right, they're usually automatic in nature. <laughs> I was like, autonomic, the body, like the body, autonomic, yes, honey. All right, so usually these things are automatic in nature, and you can set it up where you are do fifty dollars a pay period, or even seventy five, or whatever. For me, I think I was doing like seventy five dollars a pay period, and making sure that it was just automatically transferred into my FSA. Now, just to be mindful though, an FSA is a little bit different from an HSA. So these are both spending accounts, but with your FSA, you have to make sure that you utilize that money by the end of the year. HSAs, they roll over to the next year as well. So something to consider. Number two would be your employee assistance program. So your EAPs are really, really clutch for any individual who is employed by a larger company or a larger organization. Usually they offer these programs as incentives or a part of your benefits package right and so you have some EAPs where the company will pay for six sessions with an on-site therapist or a therapist that they are contracted with on the flip side there 
are some EAPs that are really, 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 really cool. Like my best friend, he has an EAP program where they cover a number of sessions for a number of times. He currently works in HR. It's so funny because the HR person is using an EAP program, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, <laughs> you better, you better go, Obed. Okay, you better work the system. But yes, <laughs> so for him, his, especially during COVID, they understand that, hey, we got to make sure that we are investing in our employees because this is a difficult time. Not only are they working from home, but they're coming to the office. They're doing 50 million things. We have to make sure that we're providing them with something that's going to keep them coming back, keep them sustained to continue this job, this work that they do. With his particular EAP program, his employer paid for, like I said, a number of sessions during this time of COVID. And then... I think after that period ended, they are going to start covering a partial amount for the number of sessions that he goes to. So I think that that was pretty dope. Please make sure that you are checking with your current human resources director or liaison. That way they can give you some insight as to what your EAP offers in whether it's time of crises or just in general throughout the year okay oh EAPs are really really cool because even if you don't know where to start sometimes they have like little directories or, or people that they can refer you out to not only for mental health therapists but also dietitians or even personal trainers so please tap into your EAP because they really, really are about making sure that you as an employee are still reaching some level of functionality to keep coming back, okay? And we already know in an organizational manner, it's not the CEO that makes the company, it's the customers and the people that serves the customers as well. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself during this time. Number three will be out of pocket. So. Out of pocket would mean that you're literally paying everything the full price out of pocket. You're literally just, I don't even know how much more to simple it up, you know, but you're literally just paying the full price of each session every single time, which I'm like, Ooh, you got money. Yes. I'm not sure. You got money, money. Okay. If you paying out of pocket, shout out to y'all. Well, another thing to consider too, some individuals do out of pocket because they don't want it on their medical record. So individuals that are like veterans or they work for the government or whatever the case may be, or you don't even, even have to have those types of jobs. There are just some people who just don't want their mental health diagnoses or their mental health treatment to show up on their medical records. So that's another reason why people just pay out of pocket or they'll find a therapist that they really 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 like and they're cash pay only so uh that therapist would just be like hey bro um i don't take insurance but do you still want me to be your therapist and if they're the bomb.com you either have a choice of finding another therapist or just working with that therapist <laughs> straight up so just understand that out-of-pocket works two ways. A person can either just not want that stuff on their medical record or the therapist that they really enjoy working with just does not take any insurance whatsoever. And even in those moments, you can literally use your HSAs and your FSAs and just get reimbursed. Or if you have the little card, like for example, my FSA comes with a debit card. If you have a little card, you could just swipe it or you can um, submit that card to that particular provider and it just gets withdrawn from the account over time. Just be mindful of it because with the FSA and the HSA, sometimes you're only putting a certain amount within that account and so you don't want to overdraw and get a late fee on payment so if you're gonna do that just make sure that you're paying attention to everything okay Woo, child I feel like I'm going super fast and the only reason why is because I see the little red button showing up on my recorder so I'm like whoo let me hurry up and get through this okay and the last one the last form of funding is sliding scale and sliding scale is very interesting because you, it really just depends on financial need and circumstance right we understand that therapy is, is an investment. 
and I repeat it is an investment and the reason why I say it's an investment is because it's plenty of y'all who spend way more on shoes than y'all do on a therapist it's plenty of us who spend more money on food than we do on a therapist so something to consider right whatever your money is that's where your heart lies also so if you are serious about your mental wellness journey don't be afraid to invest in what's going to make you better in the long run okay okay now that's out the way the financial speech and when it comes to sliding scale it really just depends on your economic status or uh, what you're going through financially usually individuals or clinicians who offer sliding scale they recognize okay let me just work with you if i'm too expensive how many number of sessions do you need for what you're experiencing i can work with you for x number amount of sessions for x number amount of price and if we need to continue on we can adjust it accordingly but i don't want to leave you out in the cold so it really just depends right if you really really want to work with a therapist and you find that their rates are too expensive just ask them like hey is it possible for me to work with you for $60 or $70 or whatever or what is your sliding scale do you offer a sliding scale to begin with I want to be clear please do not uh, use this tool as a way to bend a person into working with you I feel like when you demand a sliding scale that is very disrespectful to the therapist because everybody deserves to get paid what they are worth regardless so do not ask for a sliding scale if you can actually afford their prices this is typically for individuals who are in financial hardship or are like struggling college students or whatever the case may be so i just want you to be mindful because i know i have seen it before where individuals be like i know you you do sliding skills uh -uh. this is not a negotiation i'm not negotiating my worth to you okay period <laughs> So please be kind and please be respectful. If you have the money to pay them the full price, please pay your, every therapist their full worth, all right? But yes, that's really it. So really quickly, let's reiterate what we just talked about. The four different types of funding. Number one would be your insurance company. Second would be your employee assistance program. Third would be out of pocket. And fourth would be sliding scale, okay? And if you learned something, please make sure that you are hitting the like button. Smash the like button. Please smash the like button. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedbacks, please drop them in the comment section below. And let's get a conversation going. If you're currently in therapy right now, how are you funding your wellness journey? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Legacy Speaks. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And definitely stay connected via Legacy SPKS on everything. Until next time. Yay!